I will start with a brief review of key points and essential info that you find on the class website. Then I will continue from last week with my demonstration of some of the features of an app called Notion. Eventually this app will be the focus of a simple digital assignment. And of course, it is one of three options you have, three tools, digital tools, that you can pick in order to create your final project. And later on, we will devote more time and talk about the details of that project. If there is time today, at the end of this class, I would like to go back to Monday's class and complete the program that I had because I introduced the notes and the summaries, the excerpts, the key passages from the first reading, the first chapter of the book, What is the History of Knowledge by Peter Bork? But then there was another shorter presentation about epistemic engines that I didn't get. Okay. So I would like to point your attention to the readings, lectures and readings page of our website where under week one, if you scroll down under Wednesday point number two, you find the first introduction of the app Notion. And I want to direct your attention to the fact that it is in here that you find the link that allows you, allows you to start the process of getting your educational account. I was informed, of course, I've done that several years ago, so the process itself has changed and it has become less clear. And some students who have already tried to establish an account were a bit confused by some of the steps where it appeared as if you were getting the paid professional plan. But what the end result of the process should be is that you get the professional plan with all the feature features including versioning and you get it for free because you sign up with your Stony Brook EDU account. Perhaps on Friday when we will proceed from the demonstration to testing the app altogether and on Friday I recommend that you bring your laptop or tablet but if you want you can also use your phone to experiment with the app. So by Friday, you should have clicked on this and created your account so that on Friday, we can all work on this in order to interact, in order to exchange ideas, and in order for you to ask questions that I can answer by demonstrating how to do this or that. And there will be more demo sessions and more testing sessions before the digital assignment on Notion is due. And of course, besides the class time, you can also Zoom with me or come to my office hours to have my assistance. Keep in mind, still in the same section found under week one Wednesday, you can click on screenshots that I showed briefly that day because there is much more that I put on the screen last week on that page. It is a series of more than a hundred screenshots demonstrating various features in a very step-by-step -step fashion. It's up to you to decide whether that is useful at all to you. You can look at it. If you find it useful, you can refer to it. You have other options. You can go to the help page of Notion where not only they have very clear, simple, short instructions, but they also have short videos to show when you type this, this happens, and they show you, and every video is really just a few seconds, so 
it's very quick, a very quick show and tell kind of approach. Or as a third option, you can avail yourselves of the many videos, the many tutorials, the many introductions to the app Notion that you can find in YouTube. And again, it's up to you. See who among the YouTubers who talk about Notion fits your learning style, whom you react to in a more positive way and follow this person. Make sure, of course, that whatever material you find is up to date, which can be interpreted loosely to mean anything from 2019 on should be fine, meaning things have not changed, some things have been added, but the basics have remained the same. Finally, I want to show you that inside the section called materials, I finally added a video and more videos of last week's classes and Monday's class, today's class will be added later. Right now, all I did last night for this class was if you go under Friday, you find an embedded YouTube video. Of course, you can watch it from the browser, from this page by clicking the play button, or you can click on watch on YouTube. Keep in mind that these videos are unlisted. You can find them using Google. You can find them using the search feature of YouTube. You need to have the link. You need to start from this page. And depending on the class, I might cut out. That's why it takes a little bit of time for me. The end result is much better than Eco360. I tried it. The resolution is not high definition. And the camera angle, the ways you can maneuver the camera over there are insufficient really to cover the positions that I keep. They're just ideal for a professor who never, never leaves the podium with the screen of the computer. What I've done for this particular video in terms of editing, besides cutting out the initial, uh, the, the, the minutes before I started or after I finished, was in this case, if you remember on Friday, we watched two videos. I cut out most of those videos for copyright reasons. I just left the beginning. But of course, those YouTube videos with Ali Abdal and Thomas Frank talking about Notion and how powerful, impressive Notion is, those two videos are linked in the lectures and readings page under week one Friday. So you can find them. If you miss that class, you watch this video, but then you also look at the class notes, the lesson plans, and you find the links to the videos and you watch at least the first five, 10 minutes of those videos more if you want to, okay? So more videos will be added soon to cover all the classes with the exception of the first one. I didn't set up my iPad for the first class because I trusted Eco360 to do a better job and it didn't, in fact. And this is high definition, it's 1080p, at 60 frames per second, so it's clear enough that you can read on the screen or read on the board if I use the whiteboard to write notes. And you can quickly scroll, go up and down. I didn't add chapters, which is something I did last semester for another class uh, because I didn't have time, but uh, I might be able to add chapters so that you can jump to a specific topic because the idea would be that if not only you miss a class, but if later on, let's say you're preparing for an exam and you review your notes or the readings, you might feel the desire to watch once again the video where I introduced the topic, where I went over a reading 
and you find that video, you skip to that segment of the class and you watch it to your benefit, to your advantage. This is week two, and again, we just did Knowledges and Their Histories on Monday, and this is the program for today. I tweaked it, I put the strike out over things we didn't cover during the first week, and this is the plan for today, but we might not get to the end of it. I want to show you how to create alphanumeric lists or bulleted lists in Notion, how to place a link, a table of contents, horizontal lines, how to add images, videos, audio files, and emoticons. In fact, there is one more thing that I want to show you that is the second way of creating a page, a new page inside uh, Notion itself. If there is time, I would like to hear some of your reactions. Otherwise, we'll do that on Friday. And as I said, on Friday, we will all be testing and exchanging ideas and reactions. So I use this browser just to show the pages without logging in. And inside Chrome, I did my login with Google with, sorry, with Gmail, with my Gmail Stony Brook account. And this, on the sidebar, you see all the various pages or groups of pages that I keep. Some of them refer to other courses, such as CCS 325, or my work-related activities, GLI is the name of the program in Globalization Studies for, whom, for which I'm the undergraduate program director, etc., etc. If you remember, in order to start our demonstration, we simply used the button at the end of the sidebar where I hope you can see that there is a plus and new page. However, I said the plus sign icon can be found in different places because if I go to GLI, the moment I over this section with my cursor with the mouse, you find the three dots that allow me to do different operation on this page. And you find once again, the box with a plus icon that would allow me to create a page inside this particular group. And that can be done at different level. That is to say, at every level within a page, you create a sub page, but if you select the sub page, you can create a page inside that page. And in fact, we will see later on next week that at any level, from the highest to the lowest, you can create a special kind of page, which used to be called a table. And now the, the terminology inside the company has switched. Sometimes they call it a table, sometimes they call it a database because that is what it is. You can have a sub page which has a table and you've seen that in the video by Thomas Frank. And within that table, every row can house a different page and every column can include properties for that page such as created by, created when, modified when, modified by, if you have a team or tags associated semantically with the contents of that page or with the process, the work process associated with that page as you saw uh, do, uh, Thomas Frank doing where, whereby I can say these are the processes, the works, the tasks, the projects that I'm working on. These are uh, done or these are ready for publications that I can just filter some of the pages out of the others. I will, for now, eliminate the, the sidebar from view 
I will close the sidebar from here so that we can have a better view of this test page. And remember, the most basic principle is that I'm working on a web page that can be shared and made public. In fact, I should add the link to this test page. And the greatest advantage to using digital tools such as the app Notion is that it is the simplest approach to posting information or sharing information with everyone through the internet or with a single person or with a group of people. And what is easy about this is that I don't have to switch from this view to an editing mode as I have to do with Blackboard or I have to do with HTML editor. And basically, I open the page and if I'm logged in, if I have the privilege of editing, it's called privilege, what you grant to a user when you're the manager of a set of pages, I just type. And what I type within sometimes less than a second, at most within a few seconds, appears on the screen of whomever is whoever is watching this page. Okay, so this is the easiest way to add content that can be shared. Because the idea is that a knowledge-based project in any kind of professional field will entail some kind of collaboration, whether you need to show your, the results of your work to your supervisor only, or whether you have a team working on the same project with different pages, different tasks assigned to each, and the others need to see or get content, get information out of the pages that you create. What we saw last week is that besides just writing blocks of text, as you would do normally in any editor, you can apply formatting to the text. And you can do that basically in two ways. One is just to write something, then select what you wrote, and whenever you select something inside the program, then you have a movable toolbar with all the basic aspects of formatting and adding content. So we can look at the options that we have. This part of the section is the simplest to understand, right? In here, you have B for bold, as the pop-up shows you. And the pop-up also shows you that you have an alternative that I mentioned before, two options. One is select and apply a command. The other is select and or type and issue a command with the keyboard. In this case, if I click on the B, the text will be bolded, but I could also ignore the toolbar altogether because if you're producing content, most people who are professionals prefer to just use the keyboard because it is quicker because they can continue to type, especially if they are fast typists. That beats having to take the mouse, maneuver the mouse over the right icon and click by a mile. But it's easy to understand that I select something and I apply bolding, I make it italic, underline, I put their strike through, I make it a code, meaning no formatting at all should happen there. This way I can demonstrate any kind of code without the code becoming, being executed. And I can insert complex mathematical formulae. That's the easiest part. So I click B and make it bold. And from the keyboard, if I click Control I, then I added 
italics to this. Can you still follow or do you want me to zoom in? Can you read from the back? Let me know if anything is too small to, to follow in, in an easy way. Okay, we have a lot of screen, so, uh, and we don't need to have a lot of text on this screen. Let's look at the other options. If I click on link after I select a text, I can add a link and make it associated with that word and the word will be clickable. So as you see, you find grayed out the instruction tells you to paste the link. Normally you would select the URL on top of the browser and with control C or command C, if you have a Mac, you would copy that and then you can paste it. And if you do so, that link would be associated with the text with the word that was selected. It could be one word or multiple word. You can also clearly, you could type the link. Search pages means that you can add an internal link. You can associate this with a page that exists in the database. And the way you do that is very simple. You don't need to have the link for an internal page. Internal links are vital to any wiki. And what you do is simply type this character, you see, and then from this moment on, the program understands that I'm talking about pages. And if I type L, it starts looking for pages that starts with L. For example, this would be a page about my project on the automobile in society called Speed. And this is a page about a French movie from the 1930s called L'Homme à l'Hispano, about a man who has an Hispano Suiza, a very long, a very powerful uh, sports car, roadster of the period, kind of like, of, uh, kind of like the Duesenberg of the character of the Great Gatsby. And if I add, of course, more letters, then the selection is limited and for example, I could add here a link to the lectures and readings page. So now the text is also grayed out and underlined to show you that you can go from here to that page. However, as with every other aspect of formatting, there are always two ways to do things and therefore I can just, from any point in the text, initiate the search for another page. So I clicked at on the keyboard. And once again, I have the option. Of course, what I use is link to a page. And that is what you will be using as well. If you were working with a team, something for which you need the team plan or the enterprise plan of Notion, then using the at sign, you could assign a task and call for the attention of a colleague of another member of the team. But from here, we'll do the same. I'll type lectures and readings. And in here, you have the page icon you have the arrow because this could be a sub page. Instead, we know that this is the link to a page and I've done that. And it's pretty intuitive. I didn't have to code anything. Now, not that HTML is that difficult, but if you want to have something nice, you have to combine knowledge of basic HTML coding with CSS, the cascading style sheets that uh, govern the higher level of formatting for a page to be published on the internet. So it does get not complicated, but time consuming, as opposed to something like that, where I can just type, press enter and continue. Let's go back to 
the process of selecting and looking at this. Let's go from there to the comment because that is also quite easy to understand. It is a key feature of any form of collaboration, not only to be able to share information and other kinds of knowledge related content, you also want to be able to comment on each other's work or to add annotations that will not be included in the final project, but will be essential during the process of production, during the process, uh, during the time when the project is being elaborated by an individual or a team. So if I select comment, then you can see that I have my picture, the picture that identifies me, and I can add a comment, I can attach a file here, if necessary, for the resolution of this comment or this issue, if there is a discussion. And of course, I have the at symbol, because in this comment, instead of leaving a generic comment for whomever comes to the page, I can say, at John Smith, please look at this paragraph and add the data that you collected about uh, the, the smartphone market in Asia, right? Whatever. So in here, I will just write, this is a comment. And at this point, I have a different kind of highlight signaling that this was a comment. And I have the balloon here with one because this comment has not been replied to by anyone else. And of course, I can always act on this or that to show the comment, add another comment. This is my reply. and I can continue as long as I want, and then eventually I can resolve this to archive the comments. And at this point, I've gone from one to three, and that gives you some sense of the ongoing discussion. I'll select again, the toolbar comes up, and I'll go here. As you can see, once again, I have a pop-up identifying what I'm about to do. I'm working on the text color, and that applies both either to the font or the background, the highlighting of the passage. And again, I also have an indication of how I can do that without using the mouse, because I'm doing this all, every day, all the time, and I want to produce as much content as possible. So I can use Control shift h H for highlight, because basically, yes, you can change the color of the font, but more often than not, you just work on the highlight. So once I click on that or I press Control shift h I have the following options. First one, of course, if I just use Control shift h that would repeat the last kind of formatting for highlight, yellow background. Otherwise, I can choose a color that would be applied to the text to the font, and I have a variety of colors available, or background, and that'll be the highlight, okay? So I'll choose orange, and there I have it, my orange highlight. Of course, it's not very bright, because the idea is not to interfere with the readability of the text. So you will find that the palette is all made of attenuated colors, they're not popping up as much as the colors that you find in Google Docs or even in Word for that very reason that the idea is that the primary need is to be able to read, not to be, <coughs> not to have the color slow down the process of reading. And I could select it again and apply also the text color if I wanted to. And finally, text, I left 
that for last because it is a bit more ambiguous. But in fact, the pop-up tells you what this is about. And it's the turn into instruction, which usually apply to an entire block, not really a single word. And again, the first one is the current option text, but you can turn this into a heading of a level one, two, or three. You could turn this into a different page, a to-do list, a bulleted list, etc. As I said, usually you do that differently, not by selection, unless you want to select multiple blocks of text. Otherwise, you go next and see what happens when I move the mouse next to a block of text. I have two things happening. I have a plus, which means that I can add blank space, right? Because I develop a text, and the idea is that it's a free-flowing app. It's not the usual process to start a text from the beginning and end with the end. I do hope and pray that you don't start your papers with the first paragraph. No one writes the first paragraph until the work is done. At most, you can have a few notes. But you don't start any kind of intellectual text with the first paragraph and get to the end. Because the first paragraph would be written when you still have a superficial idea of what the whole text is, and the first paragraph instead should be the proper introduction to something that was already completed. And so, imagining that I start writing a text or a document from the best idea, the core idea, then I go to multiple places to add stuff. And whenever I want to add something, I press plus to create a line. And from there, I can create more and more. The next thing are these six dots. And you see the pop-up. It says, drag to move, click to open menu. So. I can drag this here, right? I can also, as you saw, put it next to another text. And I'm doing this just by using my mouse. In HTML, I would have to program the alignment, the uh, spatial interaction between two blocks in my page. In here, I do it like a baby would be able to, right? And not only I put it next to it, but then I can decide, you see, there it is. I can decide this should be closer, right? The other thing, I select again, and, and let me show you, adding a block of text would do this, okay? And then I, I, I just specify I want to write something else there. Of course, if I'm anywhere, I can also type enter and add text. But the other thing, I'm here on top of the six dots, and I click instead of dragging, and I have the following options. And I can filter some of the actions out, but uh, they're not that many. I can delete this block. I can duplicate the block. And duplicating can be especially useful if you sync two blocks in different pages so that if you need to have the same kind of information, standard template information repeated throughout a series of pages, you don't have to go back later on and open 150 pages and change the disclaimer. You've duplicated the disclaimer because you know that that will appear by law, by policy, everywhere. And if it is synced, you modify it once and uh, it gets modified wherever it appears. And what you need usually is turn into and we'll click in here in fact you don't need to click it appears as soon as you move and again you can turn this into a list into code into a quote call out etc etc an, an equation you find the repetition in here of some of the options of the toolbar okay so let's make it a toggle list, okay? What does this mean? You see that I have this 
triangle here. At this point, I can add text in here, add more here. I hope I'm doing this correctly. I don't use that all the time. Yeah, you see? And I can fold and unfold the text that follows, right? Because again, I don't want to clutter the view of the user or collaborator with information that might not be needed at all time to be seen on the screen. One of the essential approaches to any kind of knowledge related work is focus and hoisting. That is to say, lifting information that I need and placing just that on the screen because it is by looking at relevant information that I'll sometimes have an idea that moves my project up in the direction that I want it to take. And the ability to hide from the screen in one way or the other, filtering out or by using the folding, things that at some point I don't need is essential for the intellectual process for the idea of using these apps as an extension of your mental processes, which work essentially to the exclusion of other things, right? You are most productive when you're in the zone, when you're completely immersed in an activity, completely absorbed, which is also why your smartphone is your worst enemy during your academic career, because you cannot reach any level of depth in any discipline, whether it be science or the humanities, if you get interrupted every five minutes, right? There is a point where you need to say, this warrants my full attention. I need to silence my phone or put it away. I cannot. I have to be incommunicado. I cannot respond to messages. Otherwise, I will never go deep enough mentally into this uh, process, right? The same way you wouldn't expect a football player to stop during the game and look at their phones during the semifinals mm -hmm. of the championship. So. I can go next to any text and turn it into something else. This could be heading three. And selecting the same, this could be a bulleted list. And I'll make it simple. Red, olive oil. And let's be very Italian. I'll put Parmesan cheese. Great combo. Okay. And of course, all of this can be done in multiple ways, right? We've done it that way. But you see that if I press enter from the last item in the list, the list continues if I want to. I don't have to reapply the formatting. What if I'm at the end of the list and I don't want this anymore? I just press, press enter a second time, and you see that goes back to the normal text. And also, most people would not use those things, but use just the keyboard. How do you create a bulleted list typing? You press the hyphen button, and look, the first time I do it, you see the hyphen here? In order for something to be recognized, as a code at the beginning of a line, only at the beginning of a line, I need to add a space. So I press the space bar, there it is. Instead of producing a space, I haven't inserted a space at all. By adding the hyphen and then pressing the space bar, I have this as an item of this list. And I'll add flour for pizza. And if I go down and then I want to add some other kind of information that belongs to this level of the list, instead of starting here, I will press tab and there it goes. I have a sub level, right? And I'll write, must be zero, zero flow. That's the Italian way to making pizza. You cannot use any flour, has to be particularly refined, and it's called 
00 or 00, zero flower. Okay, and of course, I can add more level. Kind, etc. And once I go down and I want to exit the table, I continue to press enter until I get to the beginning of, sorry, no, in this case I have to use backspace to go back, a combination of backspace and enter to go back to the beginning of the line. Since we're talking about tables, how do I write a table with numbers? I just put a number at the beginning of the line, and this time, instead of a space, I have to put a dot next to it. Then I press space, and you see how it moved inside, and I have in gray the word list, meaning this is what you're doing. Okay? And so, well, we'll write here a list of Italian soccer teams. And you see that every time that I press enter, I get to the next iteration. And it's not a problem if I want to add something here, right? I press enter and it's the, the numbers get changed. And if I use tab, I can have a sub-level that goes first to the alphabet and then to the Roman alphabet, to the to Roman numerals from, from that point on. So I can write Lazio here and Eagle is the mascot of the Lazio team. And I put that, and of course I have lowercase Roman numeral one in here. And if I'm not mistaken, in this kind of program, let's see if I'm right. In this kind of program, if you want to start the list from another number, you just start with another number. That should be the case. That's usually the case. But I don't always remember the variations between different apps. So if I start with 33, yeah, it worked. So this list will go from 33 and we'll write Bari to 34, Palermo, names of Italian soccer teams associated with these towns, okay? Again, I can go down and create more space if I want to. If I want to introduce a line, you see I press hyphen, and you know that if I press hyphen and then a space, it goes to a bullet list, but if I continue with hyphen, eventually, after the third time, it turns into a horizontal line. And of course, the horizontal line is like any other block. I can select it, and I can move it wherever I need it to be. Still talking about typing, Typing is the simplest way to add a link. So, of course, I could also just copy a link and add it there, but if I write HTTPS colon slash slash andreafedi.com and then I press enter or space, you see that this is clickable and will lead to my homepage. Of course, I wrote HTTPS because I want to be secure when I navigate. I want to go to the secure version of the website or the website that will have a certificate, will alert me if the browser will alert me if there is a danger on that particular page, if the page is being hacked. But in the simplest possible way, I can add www google.com and that becomes a link. The only disadvantage being that if you do this, if you take this route, you'll be taken to the HTTP version of the page, the not secure version of the page 
that you've linked in here. And as I said, you can then otherwise just take the link from the browser, from the top of the browser, the URL, and paste it in here, and it will become uh, clickable. The other thing is that it's very simple. If I want to have a link that says Google and takes to Google, one of the simplest way is simply to take the link. So I'll go to Google, okay? I have my Google page or whatever, wherever I want to be. I select it, okay? Press Control C to copy that. Go back to my page, select Google, and then Control V, I paste it into this, and you see, this has become a link. Nothing could be simpler. Virtually no coding is required for things that are essential for the organization of knowledge. Links, internal and external links, are the cornerstone of any structure, any building of knowledge, any process building some knowledge. And as I mentioned, the germ of this idea can be found in the 16th century with the first books having marginal notes, footnotes, tables of contents, tables of subject matters, and so on and so forth, list of illustrations, tables of illustrations, and then is developed farther with the encyclopedias of the 18th centuries, where 18th century where within each article you have textual references sending you to other entries of the encyclopedia that are connected and that idea of course blossoms with wikipedia the success of wikipedia is not in the amount of information they have it's not the fact that they have almost six million articles it's the links that make wikipedia workable and useful to people it's all in the links even though of course that also makes wikipedia kind of chaotic because the links do not reflect any really any kind of hierarchy you can work you can move vertically or horizontally within wikipedia you can go from philosophy to star wars uh, to uh, lighting a scene uh, to uh, light in mythology you can travel in all kinds of directions that are entropic they don't add information they just explode whatever focus and goal you had, okay? As I said before, we saw how to create a page just by using the at sign. I can create a link to a page. However, I want to show you also, how much time I have, about five minutes. I want to show you also how I can use the same code to create a new page. Remember that we said you can create the new page from the new page button in the sidebar or from the plus button next to any existing page in the sidebar. But again, everything is done by professionals by typing because it's much quicker. So I'll write this is it page and you see once the program failed to find references in what I was writing to other existing pages it turned from a list of options for links to a new page section new this is a new page sub page or no this is a new page in and it would tell me the name of the page so I select this okay and you see you have the same page icon but this time you don't have the arrow because this is a sub page and it's empty but if I click on it I can go here and I have this page I can create it with an icon or empty etc and let's pick an icon and we can change it later now in here I can add it is a sub page in here I can add a link to 
let's create a, a different section. Let's use the number sign to create a go to section. And in here we'll put a link to my test page for, of CCS 395. And when I go back to this page, right, where I was before, let's find what we had. Oh, you see, now the link to the blank page has changed. The icon has been reproduced. And when I change the title, the change is reflected in the link, no coding required. The more you automate the process, the more you focus on just being productive. In terms of quality, focus, or in terms of quantity, adding contents, expanding the, 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 the scope of the project or revising content in any kind of useful way. I'll just show you how simple it is to add a YouTube video. How do you embed a YouTube video as I did the last time? Okay, so let's take this and I'll go to share, copy the link. Go back in here, you see? I just paste the link and immediately I can dismiss, meaning I don't want this to become a link at all. I just want it to be text. Create bookmark, which will add a rectangle with an image taken from the original video, some text taken from the description of the video. What I want is create embed. And there it is. The video is here and it's playable. And I can just click and the video will play inside my page. Okay, no coding at all. Not that it is that difficult with HTML5 to embed a video in an HTML page, but this is really user-friendly, is really intuitive. And then I can also move this because this has become an element in my page. So I can grab it here, make it smaller. I can grab it here and move it somewhere else, okay? play with it as much as I want. And it took me three clicks, right? Go to a YouTube page, use the keyboard to select the link uh, to the YouTube video, go in here and control V to paste and then select embed, create embed video. The same is true for images and that probably will be the last thing I show you. So let's go back to Google. Let's put Fiat 500 images. Let's find a nice image. Okay, we'll take this. Okay, I have two Fiat 500 at home. I'll copy the image. You see, I just copied the image with the mouse and then I'll put it here. I'll just paste it using the keyboard or using the mouse. And then once again, I can make it smaller if I want to, and I can write a caption. Fiat, oops, Fiat 500 Abarth. Okay, again, no coding, just the most intuitive process.